see, but black people still don't have a fair shake. They have punked and villainized the first black president of the United States. He can't get any support, can't get any votes. Everything he does has got to be an executive order. But how many of you know your blessing didn't come from somebody voting for you? Your blessing came because God said it. And when God speaks it, no weapon that is formed against you shall be able to prosper. Loving you is hurting me. There's a thin line between love and hate, or so the old R&B song claims. Love is always more a battle royal than a tug of war. An interesting thing about the commodity called love Love is the only thing everybody's been hurt by and everybody still wants. Charles Darwin considered the philosophy the survival of the fittest. And dealing with love requires mental toughness over physical acumen. An unknown writer once said that love is knowing everything about a person and still warning them. Love isn't built for the brutish, it, it is concocted for the brilliant. You have to fight for love, but being loved shouldn't be a fight. Unfortunately for prize fighter Floyd Mayweather, who's the undefeated champion in the ring, who hasn't lost a decision since the 1996 Olympics, has not really been able to digest the philosophy when he's knocked out every woman he's been in a relationship with. He's been charged with domestic violence against both of his children's mothers. In 2012, he served time for beating Josie Harris, the mother of three of his four children, unconscious in the presence of his son. He was initially charged with a felony, but mysteriously it was reduced to a misdemeanor. After the state realized that if he's charged with a felony, he can't fight. And it would impact the economy of the city. So they released him with a misdemeanor for knocking unconscious the mother of his children. Melissa Brim, the mother of his other child, was sent to the hospital with the same allegation. And to date, they still can't find the police report. Not to mention ex fiance Chantel Jackson, September the 4th of this year, who filed a civil suit for being held against her will for three days in the basement of his home. sociopathic behavior. And it all came to a head Monday of this week when Floyd Mayweather's best friend Earl Hayes called Floyd on his cell phone to say that he suspects his wife the reality star Stephanie Mosley 
of infidelity. Floyd Mayweather tells his best friend rapper Earl Hayes, you're going to have to get rid of her. Earl tells Floyd, I'm going to do it. And Floyd says, I don't believe you. Put me on FaceTime. Earl Hayes puts Floyd Mather on FaceTime. Walks into the bathroom where his wife is showering. Kills her. And then kills himself. As Floyd Mayweather watches. Ladies and gentlemen, that was at 7 Monday morning. 7 o'clock Monday night. Floyd Mayweather's at the L.A. Clippers game. On Tuesday night, this week, he's at the Los Angeles Lakers game. And the critical question is if Floyd, Earl is your best friend. And you've just watched him kill himself. And kill his wife. How do you go on and watch a game like nothing has happened? So that you're not confused, I'm not talking this morning about Mayweather. I'm talking about America. And I'm trying to figure out how America could watch Eric Gardner get killed on a video and go on as if nothing has happened and they want black people to pretend as if we didn't see the police perform an illegal chokehold and just go on i don't care who chris brown is dating something traumatic i don't care nothing about no housewives or love and hip-hop if you just seen a black man scream 11 times i can't breathe and none of the police are charged with anything you can't watch that and go back to normalcy and i am afraid for over 300 years Black people have been in a domestic violent relationship with America. They love our lips and our buttocks and then get us to despise them. And then they get injections to re replicate them. They love our hair, always wanting to touch it. But if you come to work natural, they say it's unprofessional. They love our bodies as long as it's seen from sexuality, but can't handle it when it is presented as strength. They love our men as long as they are effeminate and soft. But if they are manly and aggressive, then they are a threat and they are angry. Y'all ain't talking back to me. And for 300 years, we have subjugated ourselves to the abuse of a nation that does not appreciate us, does not value us, does not love us, and keeps telling us and showing us that we don't matter to them. But we stand as a unified front on this Solidarity Sunday to let America know I'm not looking for your validation because I know he that the sun sets free is free indeed. They've inflicted psychological abuse. They mess with our minds. Mess with our minds and psychological abuse. Your child will do everything to prove they are smart enough for college. And then they'll raise the tuition to make sure you are not rich enough to afford it. Psychological abuse. They've performed emotional abuse. Make you feel safe by letting a few slip in. 
Oprah Winfrey, Michael Jordan, Tyler Perry, Obama, Sammy Davis Jr. But as long as you don't talk about the advancement of your people, as long as you don't talk about strengthening who you are, you are not a problem. You can go across America and you'll find a Chinatown, you'll find little Italy, you'll find Koreatown, you can't find little Africa nowhere. Because they understand if you ever embrace who you are, then it's going to be a problem. You've got those who are so psychologically, traumatically abused, even for us to say black lives matter. You've got some runaway slave saying all lives matter. Well, we already know that because had Michael Brown, Trayvon Martin, or Tamir Rice been a little white boy in America and the police officer would have been black, they would have shut this nation down. We are declaring that our lives matter. How can they go around the world promoting democracy, but black people still don't have a fair shake? They have punked and villainized the first black president of the United States. He can't get any support, can't get any votes. Everything he does has got to be an executive order. But how many of you know your black blessing didn't come from somebody voting for you. Your blessing came because God said it. And when God speaks it, no weapon that is formed against you shall be able to prosper. It is the relationship between black Americans and America is an abusive relationship. And we can't help it. We just love them. 300 years of slavery indignation, and we still pledge allegiance. Still celebrate the 4th of July. Still serve in the military. Still pay our taxes. Still register to vote. Still put our children in public school still stop at red lights, still pay in the social security, still stop when we're supposed to, and we won't admit that we love them. We love them even when you don't feel it in return. After Michael Brown, we could have burned everything down. After Marissa Alexander, there could have been anarchy. After Trayvon Martin, we could have chased down George Zimmerman. After Eric Gardner, we could have declared enough is enough. But we still love them. The most compliant, patient, oppressed people in the history of the world. And we still love them. We love them so much, we are the only ethnic people who, in the marriage of an abusive relationship, hyphenated our names. Italians are Italians, Jews are Jews, Germans are Germans. We're African American. Y'all not talking back to me. So your children got Chinese words down their neck. They got Vietnam hair down their back. They got Korean fingernails. Y'all ain't talking back to me. They got Parisian handbags. But if you ask them, are they African? Well, you know my grandmother was Cherokee. No, she wasn't. She from North Carolina, boo. You, 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 you got to make up in your mind will you embrace who you are. I love you, but, but you've hurt me too much. It is interesting to know that if you do an autopsy on scripture, the thing that is frightening, if not unnerving, is the very first time you find love in the Bible. The very first time you find love in the Bible is in Genesis 22. For 21 chapters, there is no reference to love until Genesis 22. The Lord speaking to Abraham says to him, take your black son, Isaac, who you love and sacrifice him. 
Let's get ready to mess mild-mannered conservative believers. There is no reference to suggest that Adam ever loved Eve. Y'all not gonna like it. It's easy to love somebody when you don't have options. Oh God, y'all ain't talking back to me. If, if that's all you can be with, it's easy. God, I can't hear nobody else. There's Leah and Rachel with Jacob. That, that proves you can sleep with people you're not attracted to. Oh God, I can't hear nobody. He slept with her. And the next morning, lift up the veil and says, Nah, I can't deal with that lazy eye. He wasn't thinking about that eye in the dark. Oh God, I can't hear nobody in here. A lot of you are sleeping with folk who you think they love you. That's why they got to make love. I can't hear nobody. When I legitimately love you, you should see me how to love you when the lights are on. If you can only love me after dark. So watch this. There is a principle called the law of first mention and the very first time we hear about love watch this is in regard to sacrifice says to Abraham that son that you love hear me if you really love him you're gonna have to make a sacrifice I need some real people that understand that for many of us the very first time you authentically experience love watch this was as a parent God help me and I, I know this is unconventional talk especially in a church but sometimes having a child saved your life I know it wasn't under the covenant of marriage. I know it wasn't the way you would have wanted it to be. But having that child made you put some things in priority. It made you reevaluate who was in. Y'all really going to leave me out here. It made you think about what was really important. What really had value. You began to look at people with a side eye who didn't have any priority. Didn't have any principle. Didn't have anything to work for. And what freight strikes you the most is not your child not excelling what frustrates you is they don't understand your sacrifice you gave up a whole lot just for them to be where it is that they are don't you dare sit around my house as some lazy ingrate I had to work overtime just to make sure food was on the table One of the greatest sacrifices you ever made, God help me, was to make sure your children never had to live the life you lived. And I need some people in this room that says, Pastor, when I go to God, it ain't even for me. This is for some mature people. God, if I can't get it, make sure my child has it. Make, make sure that everything my child needs is provided for them. Says Abraham, your son that you love, make a sacrifice for him. Ladies and gentlemen, this can make it tight now. In Job chapter 1, the Bible declared that Job made a sacrifice daily for his children. Hear this, in case they sin. Said these are good kids, but for real, for real, I don't know what they're doing when they're not around me. So I'm getting ready to make a sacrifice on their behalf in case some crazy sociopathic police officer ever tries to pull over my child. I plead the blood of Jesus. I better pause right where you are. Would you do me a favor in the presence of our God? Would you make a sacrifice for your children? Would you give God glory for your niece, your nephew, your God children? God, take my sacrifice. Hallelujah. Is that all you got? Hallelujah. I can't hear nobody. I said make a sacrifice. You'll never have to post bail. Make a sacrifice. You'll never be called to the morgue. Make a sacrifice. 
Y'all ain't sound good enough for me. You'll never have to attain an attorney. I need you to shout out loud. You'll never have to identify anybody. I need you to make a sacrifice in the life of your children. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Hallelujah. Hey, I don't want you saying nothing if the enemy ain't been after your child. But if today you came to snatch your child out of the clutches of hell, I need you to make a sacrifice. God, remember my child. God, I can't hear nobody. God says, if you worship me, no learning deficiency. If you worship me, y'all ain't talking back to me. I'm changing their circle of friends. If you worship me, I'm already finding a spouse for your child. Your child ain't no baby mama. Your child ain't gonna be in the street. God is looking for a sacrifice. Hallelujah. 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 Be seated, please. I don't know where these parents are, but I feel 30 of you. God said, if you shout again, I'm opening scholarships. He said, if you yell again, I'm getting ready to put them in a career track. He said, if you yell, I'm going to raise up a mentor for your child. You ought to give God glory like God has got a hedge fence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be seated, please. Um, very first time God speaks love. It's in Genesis 22. When he asked Abraham to give up his son Isaac. Out of that we can deductively surmise that if it is authentically in your heart, God help me, if it's really in your heart, it can hurt you. If you don't care, it won't matter. But if it's, if it's somebody in your heart, you, you have given yourself over to the vulnerability of pain. Your greatest pain did not happen from strangers. God, y'all are going to let me really preach about myself. It happened from people you really thought had your back. You, you really thought had your best interests. And some of you, so you don't get it twisted, I ain't even talking about people you dated. Some of the pain came from people that had your last name. That, that you thought because we family, you were going to stick with me. I didn't know you were going to stick it to me. I was looking for my family to cover me. And, uh, so I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but... um. God says, I've seen your hurt. I've seen your pain. I've seen your heart. And you didn't deserve that. You deserve better than that. You deserve more than that. So you don't even understand the experiences you've been through was equipping you for the battle you got to fight. So he says, um, the devil made a mistake by printing copies of his resume. By giving us a copy of his Vita. The devil loves to steal. He loves it. He loves to kill. Oh, he loves it. And he loves to destroy us. 
That's what he loves to do. So God brought me on this second Sunday in December to tell you I found out how to hurt them. Y'all are slow. The devil loves to steal. He loves to kill. And he loves to destroy. God says, I found out how to hurt him. How, God? This is how you hurt him. Since he loves to steal. God, help me. He said, Jamal, tell 930. What I'm going to do in order to hurt him is before this year ends, everything the devil stole, I'm going to give it back to him. And I, need every worshiper in this building who believes you're going to get everything back that you lost from January to November. You ought to give God glory like you letting him know I'm getting it back. I'm, I'm getting it back. I'm getting it back. Be seated, please. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He said, I'm Everything that's been stolen from you is getting ready to come back to you. I feel like preaching now, but he said, don't forget this part. He said, the devil loves to kill. Hallelujah. So I know how to hurt him. Everything he thought he was going to kill, I'm getting ready to add life. I need you to just tuck somebody around you and tell them you will not die. But that ain't the right neighbor. I need you to find somebody else and tell them your son will not die. And when I give God this glory, he is releasing the anointing of Hezekiah. He said, if you shout today, I'm adding 15 years back to your life. And I need those of you that refuse to die, refuse to crumble, refuse to fall apart. You ought to lay hands on yourself and say, I shall not die, but I'll live. I dare to say it again. I shall not die, but I'll live. Uh, hey. 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 I don't know who this is for. Hold on, Sean. I don't know who this is for, but for 40 of you, that ain't even for you. God said, if you shout that word, it's for every relative in your building, in your house that's sick. He said, if you shout, they coming out the hospital. If you shout, they cut. Hey. Hey. Shall not. Isaac, who you love and Sacrifice him. Let's get ready to mess mild mannered conservative believers. There is no reference to suggest that Adam ever loved Eve. Y'all not gonna like it. It's easy to love somebody when you don't have options. Oh God, y'all ain't talking back to me. If if that's all you can be with, it's easy. God, I can't hear nobody else. There's Leah and Rachel with Jacob. That, that proves you can sleep with people you're not attracted to. God, God, I can't hear nobody. He slept with her. And the next morning, lift up the veil and says, Nah, I can't deal with that lazy eye. He wasn't thinking about that eye in the dark. God, God, I can't hear nobody in here. A lot of you are sleeping with folk who you think they love you. That's why they got to make love. I can't hear nobody. When I legitimately love you, you should see me how to love you when the lights are on. If you can only love me after dark. So watch this. There is a principle called the law of first mention. And the very first time we hear about love, watch this, is in regard to sacrifice. It says to Abraham, that son that you love, hear me, if you really love him, you're going to have to make a sacrifice. 
I need some real people that understand that for many of us, the very first time you authentically experience love, watch this, was as a parent. God help me. And I, I know this is unconventional talk, especially in a church, but sometimes having a child saved your life. I know it wasn't under the covenant of marriage. I know it wasn't the way you would have wanted it to be. But having that child made you put some things in priority. It made you reevaluate who was in. Y'all really going to leave me out here. It made you think about what was really important, what really had value. You began to look at people with a side eye who didn't have any priority, didn't have any principle, didn't have anything to work for. And what freight shirts you the most is not your child not excelling. What frustrates you is they don't understand your sacrifice. You gave up a whole lot just for them to be where it is that they are. Don't you dare sit around my house as some lazy ingrate. I had to work overtime just to make sure food was on the table. One of the greatest sacrifices you ever made, God help me, was to make sure your children never had to live the life you lived. And I need some people in this room that says, Pastor, when I go to God, it ain't even for me. This is for some mature people. God, if I can't get it, make sure my child has it. Make, make sure that everything my child needs is provided for them. Says Abraham, your son that you love, make a sacrifice for him. Ladies and gentlemen, this can make it tight now. In Job chapter 1, the Bible declared that Job made a sacrifice daily for his children. Hear this, in case they sin. Said these are good kids, but for real, for real, I don't know what they're doing when they're not around me. So I'm getting ready to make a sacrifice on their behalf in case some crazy sociopathic police officer ever tries to pull over my child. I plead the blood of Jesus. I better pause right where you are. Would you do me a favor in the presence of our God? Would you make a sacrifice for your children? Would you give God glory for your niece, your nephew, your God children? God, take my sacrifice. Hallelujah. Is that all you got? Hallelujah. I can't hear nobody. I said make a sacrifice. You'll never have to post bail. Make a sacrifice. You'll never be called to the morgue. Make a sacrifice. Y'all ain't shouting good enough for me. You'll never have to attain an attorney. I need you to shout out loud. You'll never have to identify their body. I need you to make a sacrifice in the life of your children. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Hallelujah. Hey, I don't want you saying nothing if the enemy ain't been after your child. But if today you came to snatch your child out of the clutches of hell, I need you to make a sacrifice. God, remember my child. God, I can't hear nobody. God says, if you worship me, no learning deficiency. If you worship me, y'all ain't talking back to me. I'm changing their circle of friends. If you worship me, I'm already finding a spouse for your child. Your child ain't no baby mama. Your child ain't going to be in the street. God is looking for a sacrifice. Hallelujah. 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 Be seated, please. I don't know where these parents are, but I feel 30 of you. 
God said, if you shout again, I'm opening scholarships. He said, if you yell again, I'm getting ready to put them in a career track. He said, if you yell, I'm going to raise up a mentor for your child. You ought to give God glory like God has got a hedge fence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be seated, please. Um, very first time God speaks love. It's in Genesis 22. When he asked Abraham to give up his son Isaac. Out of that, we can deductively surmise that if it is authentically in your heart, God help me. If it's really in your heart, it can hurt you. If you don't care, it won't matter. But if it's, if it's somebody in your heart, you, you have given yourself over to the vulnerability of pain. Your greatest pain did not happen from strangers. God, y'all are going to let me really preach about myself. It happened from people you really thought had your back. You, you really thought had your best interests. And some of you, so you don't get it twisted, I ain't even talking about people you dated. Some of the pain came from people that had your last name. That, that you thought because we family, you were going to stick with me. I didn't know you were going to stick it to me. I was looking for my family to cover me. And, um, so I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but um, God says, I've seen your hurt. I've seen your pain. I've seen your heart. And you didn't deserve that. You deserve better than that. You deserve more than that. So you don't even understand the experiences you've been through was equipping you for the battle you got to fight. So he says, um, the devil made a mistake by printing copies of his resume. By giving us a copy of his veto. The devil loves to steal. God says, if you give me glory, thank you, Holy Ghost, if you give me glory, everything the enemy's been trying to destroy, Y'all ain't talking back to me. He's getting ready to rebuild it. Hallelujah. I don't know where you are, but for somebody, he's rebuilding your marriage. He's rebuilding your family. For 50 of you, he's rebuilding your business. But I need you to shout out unto God like you believe God rebuild it. Put it back together again. I need you to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we can think, dream. Hope or even imagine. I, um, I desperately need you to be seated. Um, that's what I need. I need you to be seated right where you are. And he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. Hallelujah. I said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And he told me to tell black America today, because I gave up my son, you don't have to lose yours. <laughs> Not another son is going to be snatched out of our community. So y'all don't get it twisted. I ain't just talking about white police officers. I'm talking about black people killing other black people. Not another son will be destroyed. 
Oh. You may be seated, please. Hello. Hallelujah. Every parent of a son, would you just lift up that hand, please? Hallelujah. You ain't got to lose them. God, I can't hear no worshipers. This, for some of y'all, this don't mean anything, but somebody need to step in the spiritual warfare. I said to every parent that's been stretched out and weary, you are not going to lose that son. Take your neighbor by the hand. My time is up. Be seated. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. This ain't even for your neighbor. It ain't for your pastor. But 80 of you, I feel you pulling on my anointing. 80 of you, would you just shout out loud, I'm not going to lose him. I'm not. Some of y'all don't know what that feels like, but I, I need a hundred of you to just shout out loud, I'm not going to lose him. My time is up. I am. Um, I'm grateful you came to this service. I need you to hear what I heard God say. We've come to the end of the year, and God didn't give me a word about you getting a car, about you getting the house of your dreams. He didn't show me about lucrative checks coming in the mail. For some of you, this won't mean anything, but others of you, it's going to be the words you needed to hear God say. I heard God tell me this in North Carolina the other day. I couldn't wait to come to tell you. He said, because I saw your heart. Because I saw your intentions. Because you've had clean hands. For 500 of you, when I speak it, your spirit is going to rejoice before your mouth can. God says, I am never going to let you hurt like that again. God, I can't hear nobody in here. You have had your heart broken for the very last time. Where are my real worshipers in here? Hallelujah. He said, if you give me glory, I'm getting ready to put your heart back together again. That you'll be able to love with no strings attached. You'll, you'll be able to love with no walls up. You'll be able to trust people again. God is getting ready to redeem your heart. That's all I got. That's all I got. I'm going to pray for you and then I'm going to release you. I want you to lay hands on your heart even right now. Sometimes you hate yourself because you love who hurt you. It's the God in you. You didn't hear what I just said. I said, that's the God in you. Forgive those who despitefully use you. That's, that's the God in you. To be able to speak to folk who treated you like garbage. That's the God in you. To they done gone on and pretend like nothing has happened. And here you are trying to pull the pieces of your life together. 
That's the God in you. For God so loved the world that he gave you. I wonder if A.D. will shout about it. For God so loved you that he, he gave you that son. Y'all just miss what I just said. I said, God loves you so much. He gave you that son. I want every person in this room, I know it's not his birthday. I know it's not graduation. But would you, right where you are in the face of the enemy, would you just thank God for the son God gave you? God, I can't hear no worshipers. Come on, come on. Would you thank God for the destiny you see in his life? Will you shout for the potential you know that he has? Would you worship God like you know he was called to make a difference and to make an impact? Will, will you give God glory like you know hell can't have him like God so loved you, he gave you that son. God says, if you give me glory, thank you, Holy Ghost, if you give me glory, Everything the enemy's been trying to destroy. Y'all ain't talking back to me. He's getting ready to rebuild it. Hallelujah. I don't know where you are, but for somebody, he's rebuilding your marriage. He's rebuilding your family. For 50 of you, he's rebuilding your business. But I need you to shout out unto God like you believe God rebuild it. Put it back together again. I need you to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we can think, dream, 